This software you are now using was produced through the effort of many people. Designers, artists, programmers, musicians, and lots of other hardworking folks. If you make copies of this software for any reason other than to make a personal backup, you are not breaking only breaking the law, raising the cost of software for all legitimate users. Please do not make illegal um, copies of this game. Oh, by the way, you will need the information contained in the printed documentation to successfully complete this game. In other words, it's not just um, the law. It's a good idea. Also known as the legal disclaimer. Sierra Entertainments presents Quest for Glory 1. So you want to be a hero. Welcome, folks, one and all, to Let's Play Quest for Glory 1. My name is Ronin, and this game, well, this game, as well as the series it's attached to, holds a special place in my heart. Uh, I grew up playing pretty much the entire series, as well as near the development studio that actually came up with the game. They were based a few miles away from my hometown, which... Definitely places this in the sentimental category. Now, this game is about a person who left their hometown to arrive in the village of Spielberg to basically become a hero. It's quite literally a wanted hero for the village of Spielberg. It's kind of weird. And very apropos. <sighs> anyway, let's begin. As is the RPG staple, you have three classes. We have the Burly Fighter, the Mysterious Magic User, and the Enigmatic Thief. Now, growing up, I used to play a mix of Fighter and uh, Magic User, but this time around, I'm going to be playing as a Thief. Alright. So... Like any typical RPG, especially the ones in the 90s, your stats play into a lot of what you do. Buffing this for a thief is a fairly good idea. Let's so that we can actually take a few hits. Hmm. Actually, no. I think we'll be fine. All right. Now, it's impossible for me to play a game like this without being some sort of magic caster. Unless it's, you know, pure casting, in which case I very much, you know, avoid it. Because they can't take a hit to save them li save their lives, but it's neither here nor there. Now, let us begin the adventures of Garen. The Thief. Uh, can we save Spielberg from the weird fate that befells it? Let's find out. We look to our right, then our left. This town seems like a quiet little town. On the porch, there are two people. Standing is large, rather large, rather ugly, and playing with a yo-yo. Seated person is smoking a pipe. Looks like he might be the sheriff. And we slowly approach. The man with the pipe greets you. Welcome to our town. You are lucky to have made it down the pass at the mountains before the snow blocked the pass again. It's gotten pretty dangerous outside of town, I understand. Dead blinking animation, though. Many monsters have been trapped around here uh, with the late snow. Between them and the brigands, we certainly could use a hero around here. Oh, certainly. If I were only a few years younger, I might join you. Although I've seen some shit. I am Sheriff Schultz Meisterson. This is Otto Van Goon, my assistant. Good luck to you in your quest. Now, we can read various signs, such as this one. The sign reads... Hero's tail in. The um, the sheriff's office doubles as a jail for the town and the hangout for the sheriff and the goon. 
these two practically live here. The sign of the scissors above the door indicate that the building contains a barber shop. There's more than a hint of ogre about this strange and bulky character. He seems cheerful, though. And he will just continue to play with that yo-yo indefinitely at the end of time. But he is rather good at it, so there's no faulting him in that. So, as far as uh, that's concerned, if I recall correctly, you, you can, if you stand too close, get hit by that. I'm not sure if it's a game end, but at the same time, I would like to not find out. Or maybe I might later, somewhere down the line. But as you can see, we can walk. We do so by point and click. At the moment, we currently move at the speed of snail. We have absolutely zero reason to be in haste. Although, we can alter that by doing this. We are now... Oh, he bounced it. Look at that. We now sprint. Sprint. We are running in super sprint mode. Now, I'll be completely honest. There's a much better way to get around, and that's by upping that. As well as that, because, you know, why not? We'll lower the volume a little bit, because that is uh, the nature of things. And it is always a good thing to, ha to, to have a save for your game. Now, enough of us, you know, Sonico speeding around at the speed of sound. Let's, uh, let us, uh, go talk to the sheriff. The mountain. You should know. You came down from there. You make a lot of assumptions there. I could have easily, you know, wormholed my way in. I don't know. This town was named after the Barons of Spielberg. It used to be a lively place to be, before the uh, brigands came and drove all the business away. You can find a place to stay at the inn next door. You can learn about jobs available at the guild hall down the street. If you are interested in magic, you should visit the magic shop. There are plenty of, uh, there's still plenty to do and see here in Spielberg. Let us ask about the Baron. The Baron still, um, pardon me. Baron Stefan keeps most of his, uh, keeps mostly to himself in the castle of the north. He hasn't been, we haven't seen him in town in years. I would be immediately suspicious of that, but let's continue. Let's ask about magic. Just next to the inn is a small magic shop. The owner, Zara, will let you in if you have some ability in that field. She is a very strange one, all right. So very strange. I've seen some very interesting things that she has done. Things that I don't think would uh, make for uh, good viewing on a uh, family-friendly platform. What was I saying? Don't mind me. I'm just smoking. Let's talk about the inn. Go talk to the innkeeper. He will help you out there. Ah, yes. It's the inn. Let's ask about the guild hall. The town hall, and um, the guild hall rather, is at the southwestern corner of town. It's a corner of town, yes. If you're looking for work, that is the good place to go. Let us ask about something else. Monsters. The monsters come from the mountains every winter, but they usually are gone by now. The band just does not seem to have enough men to handle them. I would go out, but I took an arrow to the knee. And then, of course, I adopt, I, you know, married my wife. Wolfgang is the one you t want to talk about monsters. He has a lot of experience with them. Wolfgang? Let us ask about this Wolfgang. Wolfgang, down at the guild hall, is the one um, to talk to about monsters. He has a lot of experience with them, as I've already stated. 
Why do you keep staring at me like that? I'm sorry, sir. Your blinking was bothering me slightly. And we've already asked about that. And him. Let us ask about the brigands. There's a whole band of brigands hiding out somewhere in the mountains around us. They robbed a merchant just last week. Got a fair amount of loot, too. I am so shocked my lips have not moved as I gave you this message. I appear to have uh, contracted some sort of lockjaw. The merchant? The, the one who was robbed? I believe he is staying in the inn. And I totally read that out of, uh, out of order. And we already know about the inn. Obtaining treasure involves putting yourself in danger. If you're brave, foolish, or lucky, you might get some treasure. Ask about the... Uh, let us ask him about the dangers. My friend, this world is full of dangers. Sometimes I think it might be better to choose your danger rather than sitting around waiting for it, as I seem to do. And it seems that um, Otto has... Uh, Kind of warp um, wormhole out of existence a little bit. Don't mind him. He he he'll come back at some point. But enough of this philosophical ranting. I'm content enough to be the sheriff of Spielberg. See, he came back. He does this sometimes. All right. Let us see if we can actually talk to Otto. You get no response. So transfixed as he is about playing with the yo-yo, he ignores all that is around him. He is completely and blissfully unaware of the things that could happen. Such is a life. But at any rate, let us head this way. Exit stage left as we wander around at the speed of silly... There's no getting around it. A shop with its a shop with its eye on you makes you nervous. Yes, that shop is in fact eyeballing me. Be in you shortly. You have come um, you have come to the end of the main street. The town wall is to the south. You have an eerie feeling that someone is watching you. Gee, I wonder what. Watching you, watching me. No, we've already done that part. Judging by the sign, uh, by what the sign says, the building at the end of the street is the guild hall. She is the only sane person here. At least she's not off a rocker. Oh, there are so many puns in this game series. I, oh, such is the nature of '90s uh, adventure games. This looks like a nice, neat little house. There's a grandmotherly little old lady rocking on the front porch. Let us see. Can we can we wake her? This little old lady is sleeping so soundly that no amount of shaking will awaken her. Oh. Let's see. Can we can we interact with that? Nope. Uh, apparently not. All right. So let us. Walk into the shop. Mystical things abound. It's not a pretty sight. I've always wondered what that is, but I can never make it out. You see a wide variety of arcane objects. For example, scrolls covered in mysterious symbols and it arcane incantations. The burning incense fills the room with a strange, fiery smell. You see a variety of objects on the counter. I know that's not what that says, but I don't care. For example, a toaster oven. Very rarely used. Electricity hasn't been invented yet. I see somebody's portaled things from the future. For example... Crystal balls used only the, for those initiated in the ways of the witches. The, the jar is filled with a corrosive-looking green substance. The label says instant fire. 
Just add water. You know, funnily enough, if that's elemental sodium, that wouldn't surprise me. Elemental sodium reacts violently with water. Including bottles of mephetic potions. Potion cellar. A mortar complete with the traditional pestle. It's a blue bottle of blue bottle flies. I see what you did there, game. I see what you did there. A brown jar of crushed cockroach essence. Gnarly. A bowl of pretty little fish. Goldfish for days! See a wide variety of arcane objects. For example, books detailing uh, dealing with sorcery, necromancy, and other occult subjects. Cthulhu for talking. Cthulhu for talking. There are a few Dead Sea Scrolls, a couple of Red Sea Scrolls, a C++ scroll written in assembly language, and other even more esoteric. Again, someone has been wormholing things from the future. Dried Mantra Jerky. Ooh, that kind of sounds tasty. A, ba a balanced a balance scale. Zara uses it to measure powders and maintain the magical balance. An ancient balance scale. Zara thinks it will help her maintain a sense of balance. I hope you all are enjoying these puns because they are only going to get more bombastic as it goes through. All right, let's see. Let us, uh, approach. Ah! That thing is alive! I am Zara, and my companion is Damiano. The items in the shop are designed for those skilled in the use of magic. This is Zara. Let us ask about her. I am both human and fae. I draw my power from both. I am my name is Zara. This is my shop. She is an elf, folks. Fairy folk. We are the people of we are a people of power and magic. We and live in the forests far beyond the mountains of the west. Let us ask about this power. Power is the essence of magic. That which the wizards shape and are shaped by. I've already asked about that. Damiano. Damiano is both my familiar and my friend. We share our lives and our magic. What is a familiar? A familiar is a creature of magical abilities which has been summoned to serve a wizard. The summoning of a familiar is a most powerful spell and can be cast but once. It binds the wizard and the familiar to the end of their lives. The more powerful the wizard, the more powerful the familiar, although you cannot always judge power by the familiar's shape. Now, if you always pay close attention, her eyes glow with a very powerful, ma uh, with powerful light. You do not want to mess with her. She will destroy you. Let us ask this creature. It's not familiar enough with you to want to chat. Ugh, more puns! I've already asked about the familiar. Magic. If you have the skill of magic, you can learn the way to cast spells by reading magical scrolls. Without the skill, you have no power. The more you practice spellcasting, the greater you shall become. Initiation. When you have mastered nine spells and the pa have the power to cast all and proven yourself worthy by completing a great deed, then you must undergo the ritual of to become a full wizard. There is a place in the distant south where you must journey, 
But first you must become a hero here. Yes, she is in fact referencing the location of the second game. But we will get there, you know, when the time comes. Tell me about being a wizard. A wizard is one who both shapes magic and is shaped by it. Erasmus and I are the only wizards in this valley. The only wizards, yes, but not the only spellcasters. We will think we will more than likely encounter one prolific one um, as we adventure. Who is this Erasmus? Erasmus is a wizard and a spellcaster who is known who knows much about this area. He lives in a tower northeast of town at the top of a steep mountain called Zauberger. He can be very helpful if approached properly, but he has a strange sense of humor. We will definitely uh we will definitely be uh, taking a look at that. But, okay. Power Potion. The Power Potion restores your magic energy. It costs 75 silver. This is something that they that she can, you know, sell you a lot of. But we don't have money at the moment. Or at least I don't think we do. Let me double check. We have... 4 gold and 10 silver. At weighing 0.2 pounds. You have five food rations, each weighing 3.3 uh, pounds. You have a leather jerkin. It weighs 20 pounds. You have one dagger. It weighs 2 pounds. You have one lockpick. It weighs 0.1 pounds. Yeah, this is the basic in, um, interface for, you know, your items and all that stuff. Alright, so we actually have a lot of gold. I didn't realize that. Tell me about being a hero. Master the ar arcane arts. Those um, whose skills to vanquish evil, uh, the evil curse, and you will become a, he a true hero. Alright, let's ask about something else. Spielberg. There is much magic in this world for those who know how to use it. There is magic in this little town. A good deal of magic in this valley. There's an aura protecting this town from danger. Within most of its walls, there can be no acts of violence or cruel magic. Even so, it is prudent to avoid dark places. I sense foreshadowing. Aura? What aura? The aura is a spell of protection surrounding something. The town is still protected by the aura cast by the great spellcaster Irana. Ah, that... Name's gonna come up a lot. Irana? Who is this Irana? Irana was a powerful spellcaster who lived long ago. She brought peace to this valley. Even now, her spells protect this town from violence and foul magic. Her final resting place is due north of town and is a place of both safety and healing. It is known as Irana's Peace. Yes, Irana is a very prolific character in the series, but we'll cross her that bridge once we get to it. There, no, there is much magic in this valley, and there attracts those who use magic. I am here, Erasmus, and his house on Zaburger, and even Baba Yaga has her hut cooped up somewhere nearby. You get no response. I'm talking to the ground! We've already asked about Erasmus. Let's ask about Baba Yaga. She is a powerful and wicked hag. You would be wise to avoid her. She cursed Baron von Spielberg when he tried to drive her away. Uh-oh. Hut. Baba Yaga's hut is magical. It stands on chicken legs, and you must know the rhyme to enter. The rhyme? I have no interest in entering Baba Yaga's hut, and therefore do not know the rhyme. Okay. The curse. This is Baba Yaga's curse cast upon the Baron years ago. Upon von Spielberg and all his clan, this curse I now demand. What I will shall come full measure, so shall ye lose all that ye treasure. 
There is always a way to break a curse. Possibly Erasmus knows more about this. Erasmus makes a point of studying the effects of magic upon mortals. There is little about magic in this area that Erasmus does not know. The Baron. He was once a great leader of this land until he was foolish enough to anger Baba Yaga. And that's about it that we can ask about those. The magic shop. What I sell here are merely tools to help those who have power. You may purchase restorative potions and scrolls from which you can learn spells, if you have the potential. Potential. A true magic user has the innate affinity for magic. There is also the ability to store power, which ordinary mortals do not have. Bit of a disclaimer. You can pick it up at later points in the series. We just happen to have already, you know, gotten ahead of that curve. Spells. We sell several magical scrolls um, on study scrolls. You can purchase fire dart for 60 silver, fetch for 40, or an open spell for, se for 30. I also know a spell if you learn the secrets of Irana's Peace. Oh, that's going to be fun. Let us talk about this fire dart. All right. Now... If we want to buy something, we grab our bag here, and we do this, and it brings up the buying menu. Oh my god. Now, we are going to buy the fire dart spell. I detect that you do not have enough money to purchase. Purchase the money. Do not toy with me. Uh-oh. Hmm. Hang on a moment. I have four gold and, sil uh, and ten silver. Are silver pieces higher cost in this game? I'll have to look that up later, but that will be for next time. For when we come back, folks, I will be um, going out into the rest of Spielberg and will be um, doing my best to get a lay of the land before we head out and start fighting monsters and hopefully becoming a hero. I will catch you next time, folks, and I shall see you then. Later.